All right, this is integration by partial fractions. Um, the whole process works out very similarly to what we've been doing, but the reason why this video is special is because this is an irreducible term in the denominator, and we need to take care of that. So this process starts out the same, where we basically have to rewrite everything because we're just going to work with the algebra. And our goal is to turn this into a couple of fractions that are equivalent of, um, of the original thing. So the first term, the denominators are nice. We're just going to do this and that. This one's easy because this is linear and that's a one. That just becomes a no problem at all. Here's this is the difference and this is basically the reason why I'm making this video. This term is the irreducible one. Because this is a square, we actually need a linear term up here to take care of all the little bits and pieces. So the linear term we're going to do is bx plus c. If this was to the fourth power, we would do something like bx cubed plus cx squared plus dx plus e. If, God forbid, this was to the sixth, we'd do something to the fifth power. So it's always one power below. All right, so we've got that. Now it is time for us to start finding a common denominator and solving for our constants. So we have to multiply this term by x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1. And again, a lot of you are at the point you can probably skip this part, but um, I'm going to show it anyway. So I'm going to multiply everything by it like that. Now all of our denominators are the same, so I'm actually able to cancel out all of these denominators. All right, I can multiply everything by this over this, and they would all go away. So I'm going to, I'm going to um, save myself a little bit of, of work here, cross them out. Now my job is to start simplifying. So this, whoops. This first term just comes down. Now I need to multiply these terms out. So I'm going to distribute the a, and I get ax squared plus a. I am going to distribute this. When I do, I need to remember to FOIL because I'm dealing with two binomials, right? So bx times x is bx squared. bx times 3 is plus 3bx c times x is plus cx, and c times 3 is plus 3c. Whew. Okay, so now I've got my three different uh, constants over here, um, and I've got an x squared term, so we should remember, right, in case you forgot, there's a 0x squared term here, so we can take care of our x squared terms. So I'm going to write down the three different equations that we have. We have we have 0, I'm going to do this like this, a, ax squared, so 0 equals a plus b. 1, so 1, 1x one equals 3b plus c. And then my last equation use a new color here, is that this 2 right there, that 2, has to equal a plus 3c. 2 equals a plus 3c. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so those are our three equations and our three unknowns. And now we're just going to do a whole bunch of algebra to, to solve for this. Um, we are going to use substitution versus... Um, um, you could do like matrix matrixes or what there's a bunch of ways to do it but substitution seems to make the most sense right now so I am going to solve for a so I'm going to say negative b is a so now that I know what negative b is I can or a is I can take that and bring it over here so I'm going to say 2 is negative b plus 3c all right now I can probably solve for this negative b pretty easily. I'm going to bring the b over and move the 2 over that way. So b is going to be the same as 3c minus 2. Okay. Now that i got 3c minus 2 is b, I can bring it over here, bring this 
this for b. So 1 is the same as 3 times 3c three minus 2 plus c. Now I've got my one equation with the c's. Distribute 1 equals 9c minus 6 plus c. 1 is 10c plus minus 6. Okay. 10c minus 6, yep, and now I'm going to move the 6 over, so I'm going to add 6 to both sides. I'm going to get 7 divided by 10 is c. Okay, so now over here we have 10 over 7 over 10 is c, so I can use this information to come back here and get b. So I'm going to say b is 3 times, so that's going to be 21 over 10 minus 2. Well, negative 2 could be... Um, negative 20 over 10, so that means it's just b is just 1 tenth. And if b is 1 tenth, then a is negative 1 tenth. All right, so now I have a, b, and c. I worked really, really hard to do that algebra to get a, b, and c. And the idea is that I can take this equation and rewrite it into my partial fraction. So I am going to do that right now. And I'm basically going to copy what I had here. So I had um, a, not a, it was a, it's negative one tenth, negative one tenth over x plus three. B is going to be plus one tenth plus one tenth, one tenth, one tenth, x, one tenth x plus c, which is seven tenths, plus seven divided by um, x squared plus 1. So the idea is that this red equation is the same as this. Might not seem like a huge change, this might actually look more complicated, but this we can integrate it fair, fairly easily. The first term is wicked easy. The first term, this one here, I'm actually going to integrate right away, and I'm going to just put the answer over here because we've dealt with things like this a lot of times. This is going to be negative one-tenth the ln of x plus 3. So that this part of my equation is, is done. I don't need to worry about it anymore. It's all set. This part is a little bit more complicated, and what we're going to do is we're going to break this up into two fractions. We're going to break this up into, and I'm, I'm going to just kind of, uh, maybe I'll co color code this a little bit here. I'm going to break this up and say that this is going to be the integral of 1 tenth x over x squared plus 1. That's one integral that I, I need to solve. And the other integral that I'm going to need to solve, um, I guess I'll do that in, in green over here, is going to be 7 tenths over x squared plus 1. Okay, so here are my two different integrals that I need to solve. Um, um, the reason why I'm allowed to do this, right, if, if this was the number um, 5 eighths, I'm just going to, this is a little side note, if this was the number 5 eighths, we could say that that's also 3 plus 2 over 8, and that would be okay. And if we're allowed to say this, then we're also allowed to say that it's going to be 3 eighths plus 2 eighths. That's all I've done, is I've taken something that looks like this and turned it into that, right? Um, sorry that you can't see that. That says 2 eighths up there. Um, but anyway, we are going to deal with this part first. This part, we should use u substitution. So we go u equals x squared plus 1. Therefore, du equals 2x dx. I need this 2x to actually be 1 tenth. So what number do I multiply by 1 tenth to give me 2? That number is 20. So if I... I'm going to divide everything by 20. I'm sorry. If I divide everything by 20, 1 20th du is going to be the same as 2 20ths or 1 10th x dx. Right? 2 20. Yeah, that's perfect. So we have that. So now I can do my substitution. 
So I know when 1 20th du is going to take care of this and this. So I now rewrite it and I go 1 20th du, take care of those two, and I'm going to divide by u because this is my x squared plus 1. So I end up with that. And this is now very much like this. So the integral of this is 1 20th the ln of u, which then we have to substitute back in. So we say that that's really 1 20th the ln of x squared plus 1. Whew. OK, so now I have taken care of that part of it. Now I've got this last part to deal with. Um, this last part isn't too, too bad, um, but I am going to erase and give myself a little bit of room because I think we need a little bit of a refresher. Um, so I'm going to do this so that we have all of our information. 1 20th ln of x squared plus 1 is, is that part. Okay. So... We need to now integrate this. You may or may not remember this fact. Um, at some point, we've talked about that the derivative of inverse tangent of x is 1 over 1 plus x squared times d, um, du dx, right, so, uh, for the chain rule. So... That's right there, right? The derivative of this must be this, right? This is just a constant, so we can move that constant outside. And so we're left with this. Well, we know by, by definition, if no, no other way, that the integral of this is the inverse of tangent. So this becomes 7 tenths inverse or arctangent of x. So now we have all three of our parts, and I'm going to rewrite the whole answer down here. The whole answer is negative 1 tenth ln of x plus 3 plus 1 twentieth ln of x squared plus 1 plus 7 tenths inverse 10 of x plus C. Don't forget the plus C. I just feel like I was running out of room over there. Um, but that is it. Thank you for bearing with me for this wicked long video. Um, and good luck. This this map is tricky. Send me an email or, or, or whatever to let me know if I can help you. All right. Good luck. Bye.